This is uh, a new presentation since we got everything working like two days ago. Um, so it's sort of just a couple slides. This is the layout of our um, Elasticsearch logging on Kubernetes. Um, so we use we run on AWS. Um, AWS has an Elasticsearch service. Um, you may notice on there there's a service called Journal2 Logly or a daemon set called Journal2 Logly. We were using Logly until we found out how expensive Logly is. Um, so now <laughs> we are using Elasticsearch. Um, and so, uh, nonetheless, uh, Amazon runs an Elasticsearch service for you, uh, which is pretty nice, except they don't use security groups, which is a pretty standard Amazon uh, functionality. And as such, you have to authorize specific IPs to be allowed to talk to Elasticsearch. Um, so in that case, we have special nodes that are authorized to talk to Elasticsearch. On those run our uh, reverse proxy, our Elasticsearch reverse proxy. Um, I'm going to show you what, like, how these things are built in a second. Um, which is a uh, deployment of Nginx um, and a service that talks to it. Um, right before that, uh, we are using FluentD um, is our sort of aggregator that is talking um, through that reverse proxy into Elasticsearch. Um, it adds some additional data and things like this. And that is, um, that is also a service and a deployment. Um, so that's running on a variety of nodes. And then everything is talking to, everything, this talks to, um, FluentD talks to the reverse proxy via the Kubernetes service, so it just uses the, the DNS lookup, so we use SkyDNS as well in our Kubernetes setup. So it actually just has to say ES-R proxy um, to connect to it. And then journal to Logly no longer talks to Logly, now it talks to FluentD, and it is run as a daemon set on all the hosts, um, and then it just, it just reports to fluentd.default.service.cluster.local. Um, this is sort of our worker pipeline setup that we have uh, to generate all these boxes, uh, generate the various containers we use, and deploy them all to Kubernetes. And I'm going to go through and show uh, sort of the code behind there in a second as well. So it all starts off with the build. The build doesn't actually do a heck of a lot. It builds this, this guy right here, um, which is the thing to register the IPs with the Elasticsearch service. It's just a quick, small little Go binary. Uh, and then it also builds, um, uh, so it builds that binary, and then it also um, uh, leads, it produces the templates for, uh, for deployment to Kubernetes, and it also produces the config files for the two different, um, the, the FluentD and reverse proxy. So those get rolled up into uh, Docker containers via these pipelines, so the FluentD box and the ESR proxy box, um, which creates a couple of containers. Um, so we have the R proxy container and the FluentD container. Um, we also have a separate pipeline that's deploy box that builds basically a box that is just holding kubectl. Um, the basis of the uh, later pipelines are off of that box. So they have a box that's running kubectl and has the, um, the config files and the YAML files uh, produced in the earlier build step to deploy these uh, ES proxies to Kubernetes. So uh, we have a worker, a worker YAML. So the build thing, as I mentioned before, the build pipeline um, is a small Golang, is a Golang box. I'm actually commenting out the stuff to build that stuff because I've been testing out the templates. Um, we template a bunch of files. So we basically build the Nginx config, which I'll show you is really quite simple. Um, it basically just forwards something to an, an endpoint that's set by an environment variable. Um, we set that in the worker build when we run it. Um, Additionally, uh, we do this all for the Fluentd config as well. For Fluent, we basically just set up this source forward. Um, it's right behind my head. Um, it is uh, super simple. It just accepts incoming stuff on a port. All of these other things don't exist because we use journal D. So I've left them in there just because I've been testing it. Um, and then it just pa passes it on to the host ESR proxy. Um, using the log stash format, which is pretty standard. And then we create a bunch of, um, let's say, um, so then we create some YAML, uh, we proxy, we do the YAML files. Um, so our environment file on uh, worker.com lets us choose how many, how many replicas we want and then how many, um, and then we build an image. Um, an interesting thing here, um, we push all of our images tagged with the branch and the specific commit. 
um, using anything else is a, a sure recipe to not know what you just pulled. Um, latest? What's that? Yeah. Latest. Yeah, latest. The best idea Docker ever had. Um, no, it's a terrible idea. So yeah, tag all your stuff with the specific build that you build it with. That way you can roll back to that one if you need to. You always know exactly which one's there. And if you have an automated system, something like Worker, uh, deploying them, it's really quite easy to um, pick new ones. And then, what else? Uh, I think that's it. So, well, I mean, I guess I can run a build. It, the first part goes quite fast. Um, Docker Hub. Well, I have all this stuff locally, so. So this is the command line interface. This is the command line. So it's, it's outputting the nginx config and the fluentd configs. Um, and so those are those have been stored in dot worker latest output. And so these are all the, the files that got templated out. So um, let's try. Oh, and we run it, we run the deploys down here. So this is building the nginx box. Um, it pretty much just moves the thing in there, runs it, pushes that tag to a registry. Building the fluentd box is a little bit more involved um, because the default one was a bit out of date. Um, and we were trying to do some other weird stuff. And then we basically just put the config file over, remove all the remove all the built uh, dependencies, and then push that. And then deploy box just adds kubectl to an Alpine box. We have a specific build of kubectl that works on Alpine. Um, feel free to copy that URL and use it. Um, it's a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, we, we do everything in Alpine now, and that means using CGO enabled equals zero for any of you Go programmers, and it causes a lot of issues. Who's programming in Go? All right, uh, any, any C sharp in the house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. P PHP? Um, okay. Well, anyway, GoLang is great, so switch from whatever you're doing uh, to doing that. Uh, and then these are the deploy scripts, so it starts off from our deploy box. Um, and then uh, basically runs apply on the service and on the um, the proxy. I don't know when I added replicas to my local build. We'll see. Um, and then the same thing with Fluentd. So it basically runs the same same stuff. Uh, how about PSR proxy? Or actually, let's do the other one, because that one at least has two services. So using deploys, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't pull the image. Um, using deploys is sort of nice, because this will actually not, not kill the service, even though I, my new config would have broken things, um, which is nice. So. Uh, oh yeah, I never pushed. I never built those. I never actually pushed those images. I guess I can try try that. Um, work deploy dash dash pipeline. Uh, fluent D box. Um, this one's a bit more involved because it has a um, batch has to install some stuff. It's probably not that exciting. But this thing though might actually just start working once this finishes. <laughs> Really, no Go programmers at all? Why are you using Debian methods? <laughs> it's, it's not version. Um, Debian, what's that? Yeah. Uh, because I was just testing. So it's true. I should pick a, I should pick a number. Um, yeah, it was on Ubuntu fourteen oh four for a while, and it was it had a really old version of uh, Fluentd. No, the downside those of the, the Alpine containers? There's a huge downside. Yeah. Which one are you referring to? Uh, Kubernetes doesn't compile under CDO enabled equals zero. No. <laughs> There's that one. The other thing is that with Debian, you at least have the CD, so the common vulnerabilities database. Oh, really? Alpine, I thought Alpine had no. some, no? No. Hmm. So. Uh, have, has anybody heard of Claire from CoreOS? It's a, um, it's a vulnerability scanner, it's a static vulnerability scanner. It looks at the packages you have installed, 
um, based on your image. So things that are uploaded to Quay are automatically getting scanned by this, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's open source, uh, which they think is possibly a mistake since they think it's really quite handy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they're pretty adamant about open sourcing their stuff, which I support. But uh, yeah, so we're thinking of integrating it also as sort of a standard standard step on Worker, so you can quickly scan your scan yourself. Yeah, so each time you push an image, it gets scanned for against the Debian uh, database for uh, vulnerabilities. Nice. Gives you a report either in Slack or email or whatever you want. Um, yeah, so that's pretty useful because it's a bit like a Wild West out there in Containerland. Like you have no idea what, what the hell you're running. Uh, yeah, I'm running Debian latest. Yeah, for example. Yeah, <laughs> as you pointed out by our helpful audience member. Yeah. No idea what's inside of that. Apparently, some options are invalid somewhere. And so now it's going to try to push this to Docker Hub, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. And it's on status.hub.docker. Pay no attention to these percentages, they're going to go above 100. <laughs> <laughs> It hasn't. It hasn't. Um, it, it's. It's like. A, it's like a cosmetic bug, so nobody's bothered to like take the time to figure out why they send us the wrong data. <laughs> but some of them go up to like two hundred, so it's. It's really unclear exactly what. Or is that the reason why your container is so fat? Like some extra extra. There's layers. Yeah, just some extra stuff in there. Push in some extra layers in there. Ideally, once the, <laughs> once this completes, uh, we should see that deployment actually just start working. Anyway, the service is still working because it hasn't terminated all the stuff. So the deployment, um, the deployment won't won't finish until it actually works, which is nice. So the service, everything is still actually working as intended. Um, the service is still there. Um, uh, service is still there, pointing to stuff. It's still receiving its things. So yeah, so that's it. Thank you. Cheers. No questions? Oh yeah, anyway, so yeah, happy to answer any other questions as well. Yeah. What do you call the, the, de or the images box? Um, or it's shorter than containers. Yeah, shorter than containers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it feels uh, a little bit more breaking dish. Um, yeah, uh, there's, uh, there's a backstory there, even though it is definitely shorter than container. Uh, Worker used to use, we used to use LXC, yeah. like back in the day, even though that's a container. But yeah, like it's a three letter thing versus yeah. not a three letter thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's pretty much the only main reason it's still there. It could use kind of anything, really. But yeah, repository is really long. Uh, container is not super long, but too long. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how many times a day I have to type container. And then boxes. Okay. That was kind of an easy question. Got any, got any hard stuff out there? Do you build environment specific containers? That's how you manage, like, let's say, database password, whatever. Environment um, specific config. Yeah. So these these are all staging containers. Um, our, we actually the way we're doing it at least right now is staging builds its so worker deploys itself and everything. So staging builds its own its own stuff, and the environment the environment that we have on staging is. Um, points at all the staging endpoints and all these things, and builds the stuff for staging, whereas the one on production builds the stuff for production. Um, we're probably changing that, but right now they're separate, they're separate VPCs and everything, so it's, mm -hmm. it's been working fine. Okay. Cool. All right. I propose we have a small beer break.